Hi everybody, this is Krishna Vandalapu, Business Applications MVP. Welcome to my channel. In this today's video, we will be discussing about various date operations in Power Apps. I will be covering most frequent questions encountered as part of Power Apps community for all date operations and date formats. Do not forget to watch the development tip at end of my video which is going to be very helpful before any further delay let's go on to the topic i have logged into power apps maker portal the first scenario i would like to cover is how to set the default value to a date picker i know you will be thinking that which is by default it comes krishna what are we going to learn out of this but how about changing the default format of the date into a different format but why do we need to do that? If we see this Wikipedia, they clearly mention depends on the country and the region, they have a different different formats. For example, all these countries, they follow date, month, year. And the, all these countries which are like uh, Japan, they follow year, month and day. But whereas these countries, they follow date, month, year or year, month, date. So basically, there is an ambiguity if I show the date with the date as 01012021 because it doesn't give you a clarity that the first one is a month or a date. Okay, let us go ahead and create. And if you see, this is clear. I don't have any ambiguity in this. But in this, how do I know which one is a month and which one is a date? So in order to ensure that which one is what, there is a formula we can apply as a format. For this format, it is giving short date as default. If I just change it to long date, there you go. It is showing Friday, January 1st, 2021. But here, I don't need my date to show the day of the selected date as part of my date picker. Let us see what are all out of the box formats. If anyone supports long date, which, is, which we have just seen, it shows the day followed by a complete date. This also shows the time. This shows the 24 hours format. This is also showing. So these three are out and long time, long time, 24 short date is something which we get by default, but short date followed by short date and time. Unfortunately, none of them are there. None of them works. So how can we get that is let me leave it as as it is and I'll copy and paste it into a new control. And in this control, I wanted to change the format. How I can change the format is text of self dot selected date. Self is an object which points to the the very same control where we are operating on. Now here, I wanted to say the format as month, which is mm dd yyy. So the time I say that, I can see this one as mm dd yyy. Even then, it is not giving me a clarity. So let us say mm dd yyy. So this one is very clear and I know that this is going to be January 01, 2021. So this way I can format my date like the way I want. If I want my date to be formatted with hyphens, I can do the same thing by doing like dd hyphen mmm hyphen yyy. So this way I can format my default value. Another possibility user would see is that by default, my default value is today, but user don't want the value to be there. But if I just do that, look at what happens. I'm getting by default value by because there is a property called input text placeholder. If I go here, I have a default formula. Okay, let me pull out this formula. There you go. I can make my def date default blank by removing the input text placeholder formula. And if I want to show my default date 
with four days from now how i can do that is date add there is a default function called date add and today comma four so what it does is it will add four days to the default date if you see today's date is 21 and my date is coming as 25 or if i want to go to four days before i can say minus four however what will be the format internally it will should it will store when you select the date it will store as date picker one dot selected date it will store as the standard short date format which is mmddyyyy format and this also we can change by using the same text formula so this way i can control the way how i want to show the data on the date picker also i can control the way how i want to store my data back in my database the second most frequent scenario is validating the date range i have two date pickers consider this as a start date and end date or joining date and release date depends on your business requirement my requirement is if i select date 2 smaller than date 1 i want to show the user that date 2 is invalid by filling the color of the background with red color now how i can do that is go to fill property as part of the fill color for date picker 2 i will be writing a formula as if dt start dot selected date is greater than or equal to dt end date dot selected date then i want to show the fill color as red if not the default fill color which is white now if now the date 2 is 23 let us go ahead and select 9 this is how i can warn the user to ensure that my date 2 is selected greater than date 1 if i want to ensure the submission also to be false assume that this is my submit button and i can use the same formula as part of display mode is greater than or equal to this then display mode should be disabled if not display mode can be edit when i go to display mode 23 because this date range is valid this became editable and if i just go to previous date it automatically go as disabled mode the third scenario is ensure that the selected date is a business date from the date picker we can use a very simple formula called weekday of the selected date picker which is date picker 2 dot selected date this will show me what is the day of the date picker selected date what does that mean is sunday is considered as one two three four five six seven if i select 24 it will show as five because it is the fifth day of the week now what i will do is if this one is either one or seven i know that those two are non-working days or seven i will say not a business day if not it's a business day okay let us test this now if i select 27 not a business day it is not a business day if i select 26 it's not a business day because it is a saturday if i select 25 it's a business day but we all know that 12 25 is a public holiday which is christmas how i will ensure that also as part of my validation to ensure uh, to validate that i have created a collection with valid list of holidays for the year as per the business in this i have added 12 25 december 26th of december january 1st 2021 and 2021 january 14th and january 15 2021 so randomly i have added i have added few dates as part of my collection 
is this should be a collection krishna no you can also add the same holidays as part of a sharepoint list or excel sheet in one drive or a sql table or a cds table which is dataverse table and you can fetch it from there add it as part of your collection because those days will not change during a session time of the app when you are running having said that i have my all the dates holiday dates as part of my collection now i need to ensure that my selected date is not a part of that collection how i will do that is or if it is there one more condition is date picker 2 dot selected date in collection holidays dot the column holiday date if it is there now the 25th of December is part of my collection. If I see my collection, I have 25th as part of my collection. Now that is validated. Now if I select 17, this is a business date. And now if I go ahead and select 1st of January, which is showing as business day, because in my collection, I have added as 0101. There you go. So, which is clearly shows that this date is part of my holiday calendar. So, it is nowhere as a business day. Next scenario is get the start date of the week and end date of the week for the given week number for the selected year. We all know that there are 53 weeks in an year. I will select which week I want, for which year I want. I should automatically see what is my start of the week and end of the week for the given week number and the year. To get the start of the week for the selected week number and the selected year, I have written this formula. In this formula, first what I am doing is, I am getting the first week day of the year for the selected year and then I am adding number of days with the selected week number. Let us see what I am getting as part of this formula. If I just show as part of a label, this is showing 12, 29, 2019. Let us see, is that my first day of the first week or not? The first day of 2020 is Wednesday, but whereas the first date of that week is 12, 29, 2019, which is exactly what it is. To this, what I need to add is, I need to add six to get January 4th and the end date is very straightforward. What I will do is date add date picker 4 dot selected date comma 6 days. That is how I can get my start date of the week and end date of the week. If I go and select my first week, my first week is start of the week is 29th which is start of the week and end of the week is 4th and if I go and select 53rd week which is the current week of 2020 which is 22nd is the first day and 2nd of January is the last day for the selected year. Why do we need this is I need to ensure that how many records are there as part of my database for the selected date range. I don't want user to select these dates because when I see I need if I want to select the date I need to do click one two three so which means that my user has to do three clicks rather what I'm doing is I'm just giving one and two I know my date range so I'm making my number of clicks down by adding this formula of week number and year I went ahead and added my data source called release management which is a SharePoint list it works on SharePoint list, Excel data, even on CDS tables also. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I have added a formula in such a way that filter my data source where release date is greater than or equal to my start date and release date is less than or equal to my end date. Now let us see how it works. I have selected 52nd week. I have one value. 
and if you see the date range is release date is between the date range and if I select 53 my date range is 1227 and 2nd of January 2021 I have two records if I go to 51st I have this and if I go be beyond I don't have data so I am not getting any records so this is how we can minimize the number of clicks to the user by adding week number and year so that I will get started and end date and with that date range I can filter my data like the way I want. Last thing I wanted to cover as part of this video is format my date as part of the result set. Now I am getting 12, 14, 2, 2, 20 but if I want to format this output value I can format as this will give me on my desired date format. In this way I can format my date like the way I want. If I want month as a first uh, parameter and date as a second parameter I can do that. This is how I can control my default values to the date picker and also I can control my default format on the date picker as well as my gallery. Development tip for today's video is in a gallery there is no way I can highlight the current row as and when I mouse over on that row. How I can achieve that is by default there is no way. But how I can do that is add a button inside my gallery and just stretch the button as per the gallery height, remove the text and then make the fill color to transparent, border this and make the border to solid and 2 pixel and border color to this color and then add the fill color to There you go. So this way now I can see my row with a hand icon as well as a fill color to that row. This way I can achieve on mouse over functionality to a gallery which is not there out of the box. I hope this tip helps you while you are building galleries as part of Power Apps. If you like this video, hit like, add your comments. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for all future video notifications. Have a nice day.